RD Live. I am Megan Boitano and I am excited to have Lisa Hugh on with me today. We're going to tackle the topic of direct sales um, for nutrition business owners. Um, we're always looking for ways to kind of uh, diversify our revenue streams, but also provide better value for um, our, our clients and customers. And of course, you know, I'm very passionate about the world of digital products, but there are lots of ways besides just our one-to-one help -one, um, we can um, add revenue to our nutrition business. So Lisa, I've been watching her online for quite a while and really um, wanted to learn how she has leveraged additional um, revenue streams, particularly direct sales. She's always throws in a great deal of knowledge and really helpful um, information in many of the Facebook groups that I'm in. So I thought no better than to bring her on and um, ask her all the questions I want to know and share that with the RD to RD community. A um, little bad bit of background before Lisa jumps in and introduces herself that the RD to RD Live is a weekly show and um, really with the intention of bringing forward knowledge and wisdom for dietitians practicing in the online space or wanting to um, be successful in the digital world. So without further ado, Lisa, let's have you tell us a little bit about yourself and your business just so people have background and what it is you do. All right. Thank you so much. I'm really happy to be here and thank you for the interview. Um, so like you said, I'm a dietitian. I'm in private practice in Maryland and I've worked in different, um, different settings like hospital, long-term care, hospice. I've worked in other doctor's offices. So I've sort of seen different ways that businesses can be set up in different ways of, of helping patients. Uh, right now, my practice is like 95% one-on-one -on -one patient consults in the office. That's where most of my revenue comes from. And that's sort of like my bread and butter. But one of the things I've been doing is just looking at different ways of kind of adding value and learning also for myself, um, you know, different revenue streams and different ways of helping people and sort of how can I have a more robust practice than just only insurance billing. And that's sort of where we are now. Yeah. So um, I always think it's interesting. To, no one's path to where they are is straight, and particularly in private practice. Oftentimes, you know, we maybe went in a doctor's office route or we tried a different couple of different mm -hmm. ways and we end up where we are, but not always in a particularly straight journey. So I always yeah, love to not. get a little bit of a little bit of background. Do you do any virtual counseling or is it all one to one? Did you? Um, I do occasional virtual counseling sort of on patient request, but it's not really something that I market or promote. I kind of like the face-to-face -face interaction a little bit better, okay. um, but I do it once, once in a while. Okay. So let's just dig right in. What options do dietitians have for revenue with direct sales? Um, I feel like it's sometimes a topic where dietitians go, oh, I don't want, I'm not a salesperson. I can't possibly sell anything. So let's kind of pull the veil back and maybe talk about what it is and maybe what it isn't. Sure. So I think um, my sort of, my sort of background in thinking about direct sales were really negative. I had people who approached me at health fairs and kind of aggressive sales techniques and sign up for this drawing and you can win. And really the winning prize is um, a sales pitch and things I'm not interested in. So I think we've all been exposed to those things sort of on different levels. And then I think as dietitians, we also see people who are promoting different um, supplements and products from a health perspective, but they're not really clinicians. So I think sometimes that gives us a bad impression, but for dietitians, I think if we're in business to any degree, we have to sell something to make money on some level. So direct sales is not that different if you look at it from that perspective. The business model is definitely a bit different, but dietitians have a lot of opportunities. So I know dietitians who are in direct sales with um, selling food and recipes and meal prep services, um, exercise programs, um, hair products supplements, all kinds of different things. I, I sell beauty counter, which is safer skincare. So it's skincare and makeup, um, some hair care products. Um, really, there's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of companies and it really comes down to what do you like and what are you comfortable with and what's a good fit for your patients and your clients. So kind of put it in perspective, when did you start to look at 
um, how did this come about for your practice? So, you know, we go in and we're focusing on one-to-one and did you go in and know you wanted to sell products right away or how did this evolve? Yeah, definitely not. I, my main goal was to have a steady amount of patients weekly and to kind of feel very comfortable and proficient at insurance billing. Those were my top priorities starting off in my practice. And once I sort of got to a full-time caseload and I felt like, okay, I have this insurance thing down for the most part, things are about as good as they're going to get. I started looking at financially, where am I? Am I kind of meeting the financial goals as well as sort of those operational goals? And I realized I wanted kind of more flexibility in my schedule and I wanted a more consistent level of income. So I started looking at um, some different dietitian posts and non-dietitian information about how to diversify your income streams. And I just sort of went down the list and I, so I said, okay, direct sales is popping up and all these different things. What's it all about? So I started looking into it and then through actually some other dietitian groups, I met other dietitians who are in direct sales with different companies and were able to kind of, you know, feel out a lot of options that way. So let's talk about supplement sales. Um, okay. I know that's one kind of um, popular and, mm-hmm. you know, definitely has an opportunity. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Um, just walk me through kind of, I know you include supplements. I mm-hmm. don't currently. So I'm from the perspective of somebody looking at it seems a little intimidating. How do okay. I get started? What are some things you should worry about? Um, just supplements in general. Um, for sale. Yeah. So, so in my practice, I do um, sell some supplements through, through Metagenics, through their online platform and through um, Emerson Ecologic. So those are not direct sales mm. in terms of like a multi-level marketing, right? but it is a type of sales. Um, so there's you different- a really good point. So I would love to dig into what is everybody you hear sales and you're like, Oh, that's an MLM. So really what is the difference and how do you really tease out? Like, is this an MLM and I don't want to be involved And what is a good possible revenue generating option? Sure, yeah. So definitely, you know, the, these, those platforms I mentioned, like the Emerson Ecologics, there's one called full scripts. I don't use that, but I know other dietitians mm-hmm. use that in metagenics. Um, basically there are platforms that you can say, you know, these are the products that I recommend that you use. And then you can pass on, Um, discounts to your patients, or you can have a revenue stream from that where you get retain a percentage of the sales price. Um, So some dietitians are sort of opposed to that. They think it's unethical to sell sort of any products that's not your services. Um, But it is a pretty common practice among dietitians and other healthcare providers. Um, And those ones, basically your compensation is just based on the level of sales. So you get a percentage of the sale. In direct sales, there's more... um, tiers. So the higher level um, your total sales are, you generally make a higher percentage off of those sales. And then if you build a team of other people underneath you, you have the opportunity to kind of build up that team and mentor them. And then you're also financially compensated for people who join under you. Okay. So those would be, and how is that when you're talking about direct sales different from something like um, you hear about the MLM, like multi-level marketing, would that be like, as you're building a team of people underneath you, what's kind of. Yeah. So I think that direct sales and multi-level marketing are probably one and the same. There might be some, some um, specific differences, but for the most part, those terms are kind of interchangeable as far as I can tell. Okay. So the supplement sales is really not fitting in that category of direct sales per se. You're not building a team to sell supplements, but you're providing a service or your your patients are going, your clients are going to buy those products anyway. So you're just making a little bit easier for them. Good quality products at a discount. And then you also earn some income as well. Yes. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about um, the other direct sales that you you have in your practice, Mm -hmm. but I wanted to um, kind of figure out you know, I have in your business goals and structure. So now that you've been in practice a while, you know, you built up your, your client um, base. I think it's really important that you put out that you can't do everything all at the same time. And I sometimes feel that sense of overwhelm in some of these groups, especially when we talk about passive income or, you know, recurring that you're like, well, I'm going to do a membership site and I'm going to do sales and I'm going to develop a course and I'm going to see clients and that, whoa, 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 stop, right? Let's do the basics first. And I love that you pointed out that you put all of your time and effort into building your insurance-based practice, that we can't be everything to everyone. And um, you really, you know, 
focused on one thing first. Was that kind of always your goal or would you recommend just going all in on multiple things all at the same time? No, I think it is a good rule of thumb to sort of do one thing at a time, but maybe sort of have in the back of your mind, what else would you like to do? Where else is your interest and how could the two or three or four, how could the different things sort of intersect and support each other? But I think if you try to build everything all at once, you'll probably end up frustrated. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. <laughs> I've, I've felt that as I try to build two businesses at the same time in the last six months, a lot of times just feeling overwhelmed and a little resentful sometimes of what you're working on because you're just working so hard and all the time and sometimes struggling to really make a lot of forward progress. So right, absolutely. I, agree with <laughs> I can feel that. Um, so what do you recommend for someone who is just getting started? Let's say they built up a little bit of, you know, they have some consistent clients and um, they are thinking about how did you go about saying, which supplement is the best you know, one for me to choose, like, where do you start? Yeah. So do you mean ter in terms of like supplement sales? Yeah. Like practice? Mm -hmm. Or if you're um, even looking at, you talked a little bit about, you know, what's a good fit for my um, clients, mm -hmm. you know, to figure out, you know, you don't want to spend a bunch of time implementing something to find out that how do you build it into your practice? Like how do you, you know, you spend all this time implementing, but you really don't know how to like actually make it work for you. Right. So I guess with those, I sort of, um, you know, I looked at what other practitioners were doing and I looked at different companies and I just looked at them and thought, you know, could this be helpful to my clients? I don't want to take on a project that seems good, but my clients would hate it. So I thought, is there a, kind of like a market for it? Is there anything in the financial arrangements that doesn't really look suitable to me or doesn't look like it's a fair situation? Um, and then I looked at, is it technically hard on my side? Does it require a lot of work or time that I don't have? So those would definitely, um, you know, be important considerations. But in terms of, you know, putting the supplement sales into a practice, I haven't found it to be very time consuming. And there's no, um, there's no real financial risk. It doesn't cost money to set up accounts. If nobody buys anything, you're not really out any money. It's just um, fairly simple to set up an account. And then you can, you know, put a link through your website or create a um, like an online profile. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't too time consuming to do those. Okay. And, and I guess the other point with those is I found some of the companies have really good customer service. So if you need information on products or how to properly use the product, or you need more details on ingredients, they do tend to be very helpful. So I think there is a lot of value in working with those companies. Mm -hmm. um, they can also kind of keep you updated on product development, scientific research, things like that. It's hmm. a good, um, those are good benefits of at least having some connections there. Yeah, for sure. So any other, I guess, tips for dietitians that are getting started? And maybe we could talk a little bit about, um, you know, I feel like, as I mentioned, a lot of times people's, you know, multi-level marketing or where you're developing a team of people. I mean, there's some, there's some passionate people, I think, on both sides, but really the goal of this is to, you know, bring experience and knowledge out there because there's, you know, there's a lot of ways to earn, to earn money, right? So yep, for sure. Talking from someone who has experience, right? What it is and what it isn't. So I know you sell beauty counter. I'm not familiar with beauty counter. I actually purchased um, skincare Rodin and Fields from another dietitian and I love the oh. products and, you know, I wouldn't have... I'm super happy because she, you know, and it comes right to my house and it's wonderful. So, you know, I have, that's about the extent of my experience, but, you know, um, I'd love to talk a little bit more about what you're doing and how it kind of fits into your business. Cause I'm like, it doesn't seem super nutrition related. Yeah. So I guess, um, you know, kind of the experience that you have with that, I think is an example of a really good experience. You have, you know, products that you like, it's from somebody that you trust, it's convenient for you. And if you have questions about those products or, you know, you have a problem, you sort of have a go-to person that can help you. And then you also have the benefit of that person who's really familiar with those products that can tell you, hey, you know, this is like a sale going on, or this is a promotion, or these products work good together, or I wouldn't recommend doing that. So you get kind of like an added level of personal service. So that's mm -hmm. one of the benefits of working with somebody in direct sales. Um, as far as the beauty counter, I think I sort of had an interest in it because I just sort of personally like um, skincare products and makeup. And I just sort of like experimenting with different things when I go to Ulta and, mm -hmm. you know, stores like that. So it's sort of fun on one side. And then on more the clinical side, 
I'm also a, a leap therapist. So a lot of times we look at skin issues, eczema issues. My own kids have had probably every single kind of skin disorder from molluscum to ringworm to eczema to you name it, they've had it. Um, and then also before that, working in long-term care, I did a lot of wound and skin care training. So skin care at different levels has been interesting to me. So it just sort of was like, oh, okay, these are like good, nice products it's a good mission. Um, nutritionally, it's not exactly a nutrition product, but there's enough layover that I, that I thought it was a good fit for me. Are your primary, you know, is that a product that you include, you know, is it separate from your one-to-one that you kind of do separately, or is it kind of somehow interlaced with your nutrition business? I always feel like we have about 25 pots spinning like, Oh, that's over here. And that's over there. And I'm doing this. So sometimes they're connected and sometimes they're not. <laughs> I'd say it's mostly um, not connected, but there's a little bit of overlap. So it's, you know, most of my patients are not customers of Beauty Counter. Um, I do have a small display in my office and sometimes people are just interested, like, you know, I'm looking for a product that's like really simple and it's not going to aggravate eczema or itching or allergies or um, sensitivities or things like that. Some people just really want just generally like clean products. They're not, they want things a little bit more natural, less less toxic. So there's an interest there. Um, but it's definitely not something I incorporate with all my patients. I'm not pushy about it. It's kind of just another tool in the toolbox. Okay. Okay. That's, um, uh, something I was trying to tease out. I think sometimes when we see from the outside, um, we don't always get a good picture of, you know, what, or all the pieces fit together for people's businesses and that everybody's business is going to look um, different. I think mm-hmm. you pointing out your, you know, your professional background, that your interest in skincare, your personal, you know, your family, your children, that that shapes, you know, kind of the products and things that we're interested in, that we're passionate about, that we're not going to do well with a product that just doesn't resonate with our own, you know, values and, yeah, and experience. So it point, it, it's just a good point that, you know, you have this background and interest in skin care so it's kind of a natural fit for you that kind of makes mm-hmm. sense so talk to us about the selling process because from someone who you know we talk about being salesy it can be a little bit scary right I don't I don't want to sell anything um how do you how do you handle especially let's talk for example, supplements let's just say you're having a one-on-one session and mm-hmm. you're bringing up the topic of supplements and that you offer them how do you how do you broach that conversation? What does that look like? And how is the response of your clients? Sorry, a lot of questions there. <laughs> That's okay. So um, for supplements, actually, a lot of times patients are asking me, what should I take? What's the best one? Is this a good one? And if somebody's already taking something and there's not um, you know, a specific reason for them to change, it's not my mission to get them to change over everything to what I can make money off. I don't think that's you know really a fair starting point. Um, but sometimes people want to know, okay, what, what do you use? What do you like? What's the best one? And so I am comfortable recommending certain brands or sometimes, um, they need a specific supplement and it might not be something that's easily, you know, easy to get at Walmart, or I know a specific product that would really fit their needs. So I'll say, I'm, you know, I'm going to send you a link that has, um, you know, an exact product that will be good. You can get this one. These are the discounts that are available. If you find a better price or a product you like better over the counter, you know, either one of them will work. I definitely give people options. Um, and I never want people to feel like they're obligated to buy any particular one, unless there's a really, really specific reason for it. Do you find that overall the response to the convenience of being able to get a product recommendation from you? Because people want to know, right? What should I, what, what do you recommend and what, what do I need is in general positive, um, people appreciate it. And yeah, I think, um, people uh, have sort of surprised me how much they actually want it and seek it out. So I found that if I recommend supplements to people, either they're pretty clear, like I only get my supplements from this place and it's just, you know, pretty straightforward. It's not a big deal or, or they're kind of on the other side of the fence, like tell me exactly what to get and I'm just going to order it. I don't want to price shop. I don't want to compare labels. I don't want to go all around town looking, just tell me what it is and I'm going to get it. We haven't talked about, which is and it's super interesting, is micronutrient testing, which I think is a huge, um, you know, we've seen a lot of new options, and you know, it's a great fit, right, for dietitians. You've got the micronutrient testing. You might have supplements. Um, 
my roommate at Today's Dietitian was talking about uh, Christy Coughlin. She uses um, omega-3 testing and then recommends, you know, an omega-3 product. So talk to me now about how you fold in this micronutrient testing, which I believe you do, right? Yeah. Okay. So this one's actually been, when I started my practice, I knew about the micronutrient testing um, from SpectraCell and I was all for it. And I just like, couldn't wait to get started with it. And for some reason, it just never took off in my practice. Anybody I recommended it to were just like, just not interested in it. I don't know why it just, it really didn't take off, even though I, you know, I tried to promote it as I thought it was appropriate for people. Um, the rep I had, very helpful, like, you know, good, good promotional materials, good training, but it just never really um, took off, even though I thought it would be a perfect thing for people who are already taking a lot of supplements to sort of find out are what they taking appropriate and, you know, just sort of digging into it in more detail. Um, but I've seen in the other dietitians practices, it's sort of a standard and it's a routine thing and it's something that they do a lot of, and it's very helpful. So I decided to sort of change my approach a little bit. I found out about Vibrant America. So they offer a micronutrient testing that looks at serum levels and the intracellular levels together in one test. So I'm going to, sort of try to re-roll that out and see if I can get some more traction with it and, you know, try to find some more information that's helpful to the patients. Yeah. I think that's, you know, that hearing what really happens in practice versus, you know, when you go to their booth at a conference or oh, otherwise yeah. you're not necessarily getting, you can, you know, sell it for this. This is, but how do you, the response of the client and how do you, you know, um, actually get people to purchase the testing um, is always, Will they be interested in it? Which I find interesting when you're talking about the supplements, it's more sought out. And I think mm -hmm. perhaps, you know, people might be, people may not see that they really need the testing, right? Right. And I think, I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but I think it sort of depends on different demographics, different markets. Mm. I know where I live, people generally have um, like a lot of um, government jobs where they have very good health insurance and they don't have always as much disposable income. It's kind of like a high housing cost area. So the, the thought of coming, coming out of pocket, a couple hundred dollars, people are just a little turned off by that. And but you're I see primarily insurance based, right? Your, your care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but I see dietitians who do similar work, but in different areas and people want the test. They're happy to pay for it. It's a fair price and they're getting a good product and they get a good service from the dietitian. So I think it, sort of just depends on who your patients are, who your population is. Yeah. And especially if you're, you know, maybe focus a little bit more if you, know, you do cash-based, you know, services mm -hmm. and maybe they're already comfortable with you're already, you know, including it with part of, you know, your packages or different price levels. Yeah. There's always, you know, it's more difficult with insurance-based care because you can't, right? It's not right. really, it's not really an option if it's not <laughs> covered. So I think it's really important to look at your business. You know, I've personally found a lot of benefit from talking to people in my local community, dietitians, what's mm -hmm. working, what's not, um, and everything from different insurers to, you know, um, what codes to use. To, I mean, it's, you, you're right. There is your the immediate area. If that's who you're serving can make a huge difference. Just what's working Absolutely. for someone five communities over just might not work for you. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I think a, a lot of these things, it really depends on, you know, that intersection of who your patients are, where are you geographically or virtually? What's your interest? What's your specialty? Kind of what products and services do you want to offer? Everybody doesn't want to do everything. Yeah. Well, actually I have a question about meal plans. Have you, did you plans or, you know, what are your thoughts on offering kind of, there's a number of meal planning services out there that you can charge for. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I've looked at different things and I think a lot of times when patients have asked me for a meal plan, they really don't actually want what I think a meal plan is in terms of, they don't want to follow. Here's your set menu to follow. So I give a couple options. Um, a lot of times I start with a concept of like, you know, like the my plate method of meal planning. And usually for most patients, that's exactly what they need. They just need to have a general idea of what to have at each meal. Mm -hmm. So I'd say that's probably like 75% of my patients do some version of that. I do offer a test through genetic direction. So it looks at genetic testing for people who, um, who need to lose, say, between 10 to 50 pounds, but have generally healthy 
eating and exercise habits, don't have any kind of acute or chronic health conditions. Um, so it helps to kind of fine tune their macronutrient profiles. And it does give a personalized meal plan in there that can be sort of repeated and recycled. So some people have really liked that. It's sort of laid out nicely. It's a pretty report. It's fairly straightforward. So that's been a good fit for a couple people who just want that extra information. More um, prescriptive kind of yep. meal plan. But I think when you layer in the genetic testing, it's somehow more, you know, it feels like I really need to have this specific meal plan, right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And then another service that I use, um, actually a friend of mine, she's in the military and she's in direct sales, probably with a company that most dietitians don't like very much. But um, she uses for herself personally in her house, an app called eMeals. Mm. I started using it and I found it to be really helpful. So it's not um, prescriptive in terms of like a therapeutic diet, but it's a really practical tool to get recipes and grocery lists and sort of streamline your meal planning process. So I really like it kind of personally to help get more variety into my house. Yeah. So for your, you mentioned your elite therapist, do you find that that client, um, those clients are looking for specific meal plans or do you feel that um, your general, you know, the approach you've used, just curious. Yeah. So for the patients who have done the, the mediator release testing and the leap therapy, I think by the time they find me or, you know, we, we connect, they're sort of at the point of, whatever I need to do to feel better, I'm going to do it. So they're usually a little bit more willing to come out of pocket and pay for the testing. And they're usually pretty compliant patients. And um, once I sort of give them sort of the principles of meal planning, you know, these are the foods to choose from. This is how you put together protein, fat, carbohydrates, and, you know, take these things into consideration. They're usually pretty effective at putting together good meals. So they don't always need as much handholding and specific mm -hmm. written out meal plans. Okay. It's interesting. Thanks for um, the question. Keep an eye out. So sometimes I get carried away. <laughs> so we've talked a little bit about the selling process. And I want to make sure that I gave you enough time to kind of oh. talk about how you kind of do this in the day to day. Because sometimes I feel like we don't necessarily get that inside look at, well, in my practice, this is how I, you know, this is how I try to, you know, earn additional right income. I have products that I believe in. And, um, so if you had anything else to add, I know we chatted a little bit about oh. recommending, recommending it and, you know, not forcing it, but if people are open, you know. Yeah. So I, I do, um, you know, try to put a fair amount of information like on my social media page for my office and on my website. So if people are checking me out, they sort of have an idea of some things that are available. So if they have a specific interest in something, they generally will ask me about it. And then mm -hmm. I just sort of have like, these things in the back of my mind when I'm working with somebody and they they come in, they say, this is the problem I'm having, or this is what I want. I sort of internally do an assessment and find out nutritionally, what do they need? Um, and then also, is there any other product or service that I have that can be helpful to them? And so I usually tell them, you know, this is my main recommendation of working on this. If you wanted to take, um, you know, another approach, you could do this also. These are other options that you have. I really put things out as an option. Okay. And I tell people, these are the features, these are the pros and cons, these are the costs. And I let people really just make an informed decision. And I think I don't, based on what you said earlier, that your market, you know, primary insurance based, a lot of government employees where, you know, you necessarily don't have, I think, you know, giving them what they came for, but also giving them that, you know, options of where they could go makes absolute, you know, complete logical sense for your, your business and your clientele. Yep. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, for the most part, people people sort of like to have a bit of a choice. And if they, I also tell people that sometimes it depends on what do you want to do? What are you interested in doing? Cause you might want to do something, but you know, you don't have time to do it. Or, um, you know, sometimes people will ask me like, Oh, what is this beauty counter? And I'll talk to them about it. And it'll just be a nice conversation, but it's not a specific, um, selling conversation. And sometimes they come back later and ask about it. So I feel like, um, there's benefit to just kind of putting information out there and then letting people make a good decision. But just because you choose to offer some form of products doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a salesperson at the same time. You can, <laughs> it right. doesn't mean you have to open that crazy closet and be that creepy person that you've been approached by before. That isn't what it's about. Um, so I think that's kind of what I was, the next kind of question is what are the biggest misconceptions that you, you're in a number of groups and you provide a lot of 
you know, you provide so much great value and insight when people ask questions. So I'm sure you see the same things asked perhaps over and over again, because people just really don't understand what it is and what it isn't. So I'd be curious to see what you, what you find to be the biggest misconceptions about sales or direct sales. Yeah. So I think, especially for like the, the multi-level marketing, people think that it has to be done a certain way. People think it has to be, um, you know, kind of like, like a forceful sales or forcing people to go to parties that they don't want to go to. Um, but I found that different companies sort of have different standard approaches, but usually it's not prescriptive in terms of you have to do it, do it exactly this way. Mm -hmm. I think most of these companies have, you know, this is a method that kind of works good within our company and for these products. So that's sort of the basis of a lot of training, but really within these companies and different teams, people do things, you know, in all different ways. So um, I've seen different dietitians that will um, like some do essential oils. Mm -hmm. So they just let people know, like, you know, these are some products that are available. Um, they don't have to be out setting up huge displays and, um, you know, having parties where people have to come and smell things if they don't want to. It can just be like really naturally worked in to your day by day life. Right. I think. I think because, you know, I mentioned before I, I purchased skincare and a similar, you know, MLM marketing and mm -hmm. it's such a convenience for me. I hate shopping. And I know we've connected about this before. Oh, sure, the thought yeah. of going to any beauty, beauty place and actually buying stuff just makes me, ah, the fact mm -hmm. that somebody personally checks in with me every single month. Do you need anything? It's not like, what can I sell you? It's like, oh yeah, I'm almost out. Arrives yep. to my door when I was pregnant and when I went to breastfeeding, can I use this? Can I not? Well, let me check with my science person, all mm -hmm. from the comfort of my home doing nothing. Someone that I know and trust and um, knows yep. me. And so I, I feel like sometimes there's, you know, um, depending on the product and the person, um, it may not be for you, but for me, I, I find it to be, you know, super convenient <laughs> for, for my skin anyway. <laughs> Yeah. And I think that's, those are definitely like some of the main benefits, um, you know, and it just sort of like works into your daily life, you know, as a customer, you know, you're for you as a customer and for me as somebody selling it, I try to just kind of work it in as appropriate. And if it's not appropriate to talk about it, that's okay. Absolutely. That's yeah. actually really interesting. So it doesn't have to be weird and creepy. Um, no, it definitely which, doesn't. Have to be but weird. I think sometimes people have had a bad experience. So it puts the whole industry in a certain light. You know, it's not for everyone, but I think just because it isn't for you doesn't mean, you know, um, it might not be for someone else. So I always try to, you know, think about what we're saying and whether or not it's helping the conversation or, you know, it could our experience have been negative? Does it reflect on everything for, you know, an entire, you know, industry? Just like if someone had a bad experience at a registered dietitian and, you know, they just go everywhere all the time saying the entire profession is, you know, you know, it right. may not be a good reflection. So, you know, always just thinking about what we're saying and, um, you know, there's a place for everything. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I see, um, one thing I see as another misconception in the groups is that another, you know, certain companies products are like, um, not good products or they don't meet mm -hmm. certain standards or it's not what they would recommend for their patients. And I think it's sort of a misconception to think that, any one product is the best product or the best thing for everybody. I definitely believe, um, you know, everything is not for everybody, but a lot of products can be good and different in different situations. So I think it's important to just kind of keep an open mind. So if it's a good product, it's a good fit. It can be really good. And if it's not, it's not, it's not something where you have to force it. Right. That, you know, it may not be just because it's a product and something that you offer it might not be a good product for that specific client. Nope, definitely not. You're not, you're not necessarily a salesperson. You're really out to help people. And some people, this is very helpful service and a uh, product to offer. Mm -hmm. So what resources or tools do you recommend for dietitians that are going, Hmm, this seems like, you know, I think I'd like to perhaps look at supplements. Where can they go to, you know, get good answers and be around people who have experience to kind of ask those questions and get up and running. Like, where do I put it on my website? And how do you have those conversations? And what kind of papers do you put it in front of your, all these questions that you have when you're getting started with anything? Yeah. So I guess um, I found like for myself so much value in all these different um, dietitian groups. Like I found that whatever question I have as I'm working, if I ask a question like in a group or two, depending on what the, you know, the, the market is for the group, um, I've gotten tons of good input that have, has really helped me in kind of a day by day basis. Like, how do I do this? I'm not sure what's the 
judgment call on on this one or practically who do I talk to that knows how to do it so I think you know definitely reaching out within all these groups that we have access to is extremely helpful um you know for any specific brand either for like supplement sales or direct sales the company websites usually have tons of information where you can find out how does the program work what's the compensation kind of like what's involved so a lot of information is really available if you look and then I do have a, kind of the quality, like you're thinking about supplements when you're looking at different options. I hear full script mm-hmm. a lot. You mentioned um, the one you couple that you use. Yep. Is there some kind of, how would you even go about going? I mean, you know what other dietitians use, but we're all kind of type A, right? We want to <laughs> dot our own I's and cross our own T's and perhaps do our own research. Mm-hmm. Do you have any recommendations on how to go out and evaluate different supplement company so at least you feel like I did my own due diligence yeah so I mean generally what I do is I tend to look um look at the package information you know for different for different products and find out does this is there anything in here that's sort of a red flag is this something that I would recommend sort of across the board or is a, a more specialty product do the prices look fair for what it is um a lot of times the different companies will give you information on what are their quality standards like are all their products gluten-free? Are some of them, are they organic? Um, what kind of like fillers are in there? Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's differences within products within like a company's line. So sometimes it might be product by product versus the company as a whole. So I think a lot of that also depends on sort of like what's your niche and what's exactly. your... Exactly. I was just thinking that. Everybody's yeah. business is going to be different. You look at the same exact packaging and you're going to pick out product A and someone else is going to look at C because of their own, you know, clients. Right. So some, you know, for some clients, you know, the total cost is the, you know, is the top priority. Sometimes Mm -hmm. if it's, um, if you work with every, a lot of celiacs, like gluten-free is definitely going to be a top priority. Cross-contamination is a top priority. Whereas for someone that's eating sandwiches every day, it's not really as big of a concern for them. So I think it really depends on what are your needs within your practice. And it's going to be different for, you know, for different practices. Very interesting. So you were mentioning your um, group that you have that supports dietitians in direct sales. So give us the details. about that. Yeah. So I recently started a group. Um, so it's for dietitians who are in direct sales. So either they're already with a company or they're thinking about um, joining a company or they just want more information. It's not company specific. So it's not just beauty counter. There's a variety of companies represented there. Um, so I really want the place to the group to be about helping each other in terms of what's working in your practice or what's working in your business or questions does a new person have, um, you know, kind of like sales and promotion strategies or how are people incorporating this part of their business with the rest of their life or with other aspects of their business. Hmm. That's super helpful. It's interesting as, you know, I feel like in the last year, Facebook groups have kind of, I don't want to say exploded for dietitians, but there's so many and they're yeah. starting to get very, um, specialized, right? Yeah, definitely. As we look to um, kind of get better quality um, information from various groups, you know, whether it's mm-hmm. really big or, you know, smaller or, you know, with knowledge that there's a lot of options out there that, you know, if you're not getting the answers, then definitely Lisa's group on, is it dietitians and nutritionists and direct sales? Is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah just put that in Facebook, search it, and, you know, you can ask to join um, yep, to let you write in. So this has been really helpful. So we've kind of been all over the place <laughs> and I, I know I'm, there's some questions I went off script because that's what I always do. Um, but as I've bounced around, is there anything that you feel that I kind of didn't touch on enough or that you feel that you just would really want someone to know about this whole area that I didn't give you a chance to say? Or... Um, not specifically, but just sort of as a general statement, I just, um, one thing I, I see in terms of misconceptions or people sort of having strong opinions about things should be this way or that way. I just feel very strongly that in um, kind of any business and any clinical practice, there isn't always a one size fits all. I think things have to be really customized and something that works really good for one person might be terrible for somebody else. And um, just because something has the potential to be a bad fit or could be done unethically in some circumstances doesn't mean that it's across the board, you know, a bad problem. Very good. And that you don't have to like be a salesperson to sell products. 
Definitely not. Something no matter what, whether you're selling your services or you're selling, you know, a, a ebook or a course in some way or form, you're helping people see the value. And I think in the case of, you know, whether it's supplements or skincare, there are some people who value the convenience or they don't really want to go out or they like having a personal relationship. So it's really being in tune with your, your client and understanding what's a value to them and not, you're not going to push it down. You know, if someone who clearly it's just not in alignment with, you know, what their interests and values is, I mean, you're not going to, it's just not going to be a good fit. So I feel like you're actually helping, not selling. Because if you, you know, I really think if you're pushing something towards somebody that they don't have an interest in, it's going to backfire yeah. and it's going to hurt you. You know, they're going to go home and say like, don't see that dietitian. <laughs> She's just trying to sell you X, Y, and Z. But if you help somebody find a product or a service that they need and it helps them, they're going to be glad for it. And they're going to give you referrals and say like, she really helped me figure this thing out when I didn't figure it out before. And I think that's how a business is going to grow. Yeah. And realistically, you mentioned, you know, the percentage of your business that comes from your actual one-to-one counseling. And I think there's kind of this fairy tale idea about, I don't want to say fairy tale, but, you know, passive income and some of these other revenue generating that the, that whether it's passive, right, you're going to continue, if they continue to order those supplements, right, maybe they haven't mm-hmm. come to see you in a while, but that mm-hmm. the reality, you know, you're still, maybe, you know, meat and potatoes or you're, quinoa and seitan if you want to say is coming maybe from your um your one-to-one kind of what's been your experiences you know you kind of see it as this golden egg over here that you know I can you know do this yeah. and make a bunch yeah, more I money I sort of see it as you know my, my one-on-one patients that's the main part of my business um the other the other like revenue streams is it's sort of like a bonus, you know, it's um, an extra cushion, it's an extra diversification, it is some passive income, um, but it's not my main focus, but it does have potential to kind of have, you know, like lasting financial benefits, and especially with direct sales, um, as those businesses grow, people do realize like residual incomes and things over a period of time. So I think it's, when you are when you have like a mainly patient-based business, um, you have to kind of take into account what's the potential for different things to go up and down over time mm-hmm. and how to like round things out, you know, kind of for the long term. It's not just this month I made this much money on this. So therefore this is a good decision. Um, different things will grow at different times. Hmm. Super interesting. This is very um, insightful for me for an area that I, you know, I don't know a lot about. Um, and you know, I think sometimes just pulling the curtain back and talking to people who actually are doing it in practice, you learn so much about maybe what you thought something was and it, and it just maybe isn't. <laughs> and, yeah, I, absolutely. and I think just the learning about your individual practice, I hope for some, you know, people listening in that the lights, you know, that oftentimes we try to take what we heard in a group and just kind of smash it down on whatever we're doing without kind of taking that look at our own personal background, like your interest in skincare and, you know, Mm -hmm. from all of your family and your prior, you know, work in long-term care, that that was a good fit for you. And looking at the general client that you serve, that it isn't, oh, this is working for so-and-so, I'm going to add this to my practice, that it really is a thoughtful process and evaluation and that just because it works for someone else doesn't mean it's going to be a good fit for you. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of different direct sale companies like even ones that aren't represented in our group yet so I think there's there's lots of opportunities for people to find a fit of where's their interest and where would it be practical for them to to work it in their business if that's something that they want to do that's awesome well if people want to reach out to you later on um you can always sometimes people are listening and go ahead and drop a comment we'll visit back and answer those or just join Lisa's group and ask her right in there I'm sure she would be happy to um, get you more information on various options. So Lisa, it's been great having you on today and thank you so much for taking the time to, to join and, um, you know, talk about an area that I think doesn't get perhaps as much, um, focus as, um, some of the others, um, <laughs> available. And, um, let me check real quick just to see if I missed anybody's questions. Okay, um, cool. I want to make sure that I didn't miss anyone. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A question about trying the products yourself and, you know, the product or service before, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of putting it out as, you know, promoting it to others. I think that's a really valid point that Corin brought up. Um, So thank you for joining in. 
Did that yes, kind I of can... something you found useful? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely um, used some beauty counter products before I started talking to people about them because I wanted to know how did it actually feel? What happened to my own skin? Mm -hmm. And I know that what I went through or what I experienced is not going to be the same for everybody, but I still want, you know, a point of reference. Um, likewise, even for the supplements that I've sold in my office, I do try to be somewhat transparent with patients in terms of, you know, I've tried these, this is what they're like. This is kind of the features of how they do their shipping. Um, so that's personalized. Um, I don't want to just be a general salesperson. Like I just work at a store, you know, it's, it's a different kind of business. Um, but I think for any dietitian that's interested in selling any sort of product, you definitely can, um, you know, test, either test them out through an online order or through another consultant. There's definitely a big value in doing that. Yeah. I like the convenience you were mentioning of just being able to send the client a link to be able mm -hmm. to, um, you know, get the product that they need, which is a lot easier than just a piece of paper with a list. It's something they can take action on right then and there. They don't have yeah. to run out and try to look at the labels and figure out how many milligrams of X, Y, and Z, but I'm sure you've given them that information. If they want to go out and do it that way, you're just giving them options. Um, here's the yep. recommended product and here's the kind of, you know, the makeup you're looking for. So Absolutely. sounds, um, I'm cer certainly curious at looking at it for my own um, use. So all right. Excellent. Yeah. So thanks again for coming on. Um, thank you everyone for listening in and we will continue on um, with our um, live interview um, next week. We'll take a couple of breaks in June, moving into the summertime um, vacations and other gone last week. Um, I just celebrated my 39th birthday over the weekend. So lots of <laughs> reflection on my life and what I've accomplished and um, ready to charge into this very um, exciting year that I am on. Uh, so thank you everyone for tuning in and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much.